Hi everybody, this is Anne. I get a lot of messages from people who tell me they have new pottery classes starting up and they're looking for some quick and easy projects to get excited about. In this video, I thought I would design five fun folded pottery projects that any skill level can complete. Let's go! The first project is a cracker serving tray or perhaps a cookie dish. I rolled out a quarter inch slab between two long wooden rulers, then ribbed the clay on both sides. I placed a piece of plastic wrap over the clay, then looked for a round lid. The top to one of my glaze bottles was the perfect size. I cut out five circles from the slab. The plastic wrap helps the clay not stick to the lid and it also pulls on the edges of the slab which rounds them so they're not sharp. I still needed to round the bottom of each disc, so I wet my finger and rounded the bottom edges of each one. Next, I put the plastic wrap down on the mat. I needed to attach them, so I placed the first disc down on one end of the plastic and scored the very bottom edge of it and the bottom edge of the second disc. I then slipped the bottom edge of one of the discs and placed the second disc just overlapping the first one about a half to three quarters inches. I continued this process until all five discs were attached. I placed another piece of plastic wrap over top of them. I put the rolling pin in the center of the discs and rolled those overlapped areas flat. The areas between each disc weren't completely flat, so I took my rubber rib and smoothed the middle. I turned over that sandwich of discs and plastic, then rolled and ribbed the bottom center flat as well. Now that looks pretty cool. I needed a round form for this project. I found this PVC pipe that was the perfect size. I just placed the two lugs of clay under the pipe edges to stabilize it. Then I picked up the plastic and placed the joined discs over the pipe. I gently folded the clay over the discs to form the half barrel shape. I left these on the form until they had dried a bit and were more rigid. To finish, I just turned them upside down on a flat surface and removed the plastic. To keep the piece stable, I created little knobs to position in each corner. I used a half inch tablespoon for that. When I popped the clay out of the form, I had a perfect little button. I scored the back of the half circle and one of the corners. I slipped one of the edges, then connected the two. I repeated this step for all four corners. Remember, I'm not trying to elevate the piece from the ground, I'm just trying to keep it stable so the feet are just sitting along the side. I created a jagged band around the top and bottom, then glazed it with my homemade white liner glaze in the center and Amico Sky Glaze on the edges. Next I'll show you how I made an easy, perfectly folded rectangular tray. I cut it with a handsaw from wall insulation called Fomular, which you can find in most hardware stores. You can cut whatever shape you want, but I thought I'd keep it just to a simple rectangle. I measured the mold, then created this template for the clay. I cut out the template from the slab. I scored all four corners. I wrapped the foam in plastic to keep the clay from sticking. I placed the clay slab over the template, then slipped the edges and began to fold the clay over the edge. Now 
You may have an edge begin to crack like I did. Just wet your finger and work the clay back together and continue attaching the edges together really well. If the clay is still soft, it's very plastic and will not be a problem. You can see that on each subsequent edge before folding the clay, I compressed each corner and edge with my fingers before folding them down to try and avoid the cracking. I worked each corner and along the bottom edge too. For the decoration of this tray, I rolled out an eighth inch slab, placed plastic over the slab and cut out little water bottle top medallions. Aren't they cute? You can just score, slip, and attach these as they are, or you can pinch the edges and attach them. To finish the tray, simply stab the foam with your needle tool and pull it out. Then pull the plastic out. I worked in little coils to each joint to prevent cracking. I rounded the sides of the piece with my wet fingers. To dry it, I placed little weights on each edge and put plastic over the piece to dry it slowly. I glazed it with my Amico Weeping Plum and Oatmeal on the sides and my white liner glaze inside. Isn't it pretty with the candles? The next project is a spoon rest. I created this heart-shaped template for it that I'll put a link for in the description section under the video. I traced around the shape of it on a quarter inch slab so I know the area where to target the decoration. I thought I'd add texture to this piece using a hand-carved roller. If you want to see how I made this, check out the link to the video above. I pressed and rolled it over the traced marks on the slab. I replaced the template and cut it out of the slab. With a wet finger, I softened and rounded the edges of the clay. As this piece will be folded over, I scored the top of one of the edges and the bottom of the corresponding edge. I slipped one of the edges. I then folded the edges over each other and attached so the piece formed a small bowl shape. I connected the edges so they were tight together. I used the PVC pipe under the smaller edge to prop it up into shape. I then rounded the front part for the spoon and created a flat bottom for it. I left that to dry over the PVC pipe until it was stiff. I glazed it with Amico Snow on one side and Storm over the other side so they overlapped. Let's make a folded bowl. Again, I started with a large rolled and ribbed quarter inch slab and placed a piece of plastic wrap over the top. I turned it over so the plastic was on the bottom. I decided to decorate the slab first. I filled my hand extruder with clay that has blue mason stain added to it. I replaced the cap and began extruding tiny spaghetti strands over the slab. I carefully pulled the strands apart and strategically positioned them. I 
I placed a piece of plastic over them and rolled them so they impressed into the clay. I took the plastic off the slab, then placed a large styrofoam half sphere over it and cut it out. I picked up the slab and placed it over the opening, then pushed it slowly into the styrofoam. Don't worry if it buckles. Now I'm going to give the bowl character by folding it. I pulled the plastic up from the foam, which caused the clay to buckle. I repeated this all the way around the form. I made sure the folds were just wavy, not too sharp, to keep the edges from cracking. This gives the piece the look of a shell or an organic leafy shape. I made this one earlier where I added strands to the back side as well and an extruded border edge. I glazed it with clear for the seashell look. Finally, we'll make a leaf face. I found these large basswood leaves in my backyard that have thick veins that'll work great. I placed it on a quarter inch slab and rolled it from the center, working outward onto the clay. When I took it off, you can see all the great vein textures. I cut around the leaf, leaving a little edge around it. Here are two that I made earlier. I used my wet finger to soften and round the edges. I need the two leaves to be mirror images of each other, so I turned one of the leaves over and stacked the two together. I cut away any excess areas so the two lined up. Again, I used the PVC pipe, this time wrapping plastic around it and standing it upright between the two leaf shapes. I scored the back sides of each leaf and slipped one side. I placed each stiffened leaf on either side of the pipe. Holding the middle of the clay to the pipe, I began attaching the leaf together along the front edge and back down towards the pipe. I then attach the back sides of the leaf together. I place little balls of clay along the top edge of both sides of the pipe to reinforce the two edges together so they won't crack. I then rolled out a slab for the bottom section. I place the piece over the center of the slab. I picked up the front part of the slab and pushed it up against the bottom of the leaf form so it would imprint. I did the same thing to the back side and imprinted that as well. I scored the bottom edge of the piece. I then scored the inside of the lines on the slab and slipped it. I replaced the form over the lines, picked up the front edge, attached it, then cut away the excess clay from that side. I did the same thing to the other side and cut away that clay. I repeated this for the back side of the piece. Once the bottom was attached, I took out the PVC pipe, twisted out the plastic, then pushed down on the piece to flatten the bottom and give it a place to sit. Using my hand, I pushed out the clay from the inside to give the piece volume. I added a coil to the bottom and side edges and smoothed them with a paintbrush. I used Georgie's wash over the bisque piece, then glazed it with eggshell glaze for this cool look. I love how that turned out.
I hope one of these ideas has given you a starting point to be creative and even inspired you to come up with even more projects. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.